Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're going to be doing a review of the RZ Mask. It's going to be a mostly positive review, but there are some points of criticism that I'm going to talk about. So let's get to it. All right, so the RZ Mask company contacted me to see if I wanted to review this product. First, they wanted to provide me with some form of compensation in order to do the video. And I basically just said, look, I don't take money to do videos. I like to be unbiased in my reviews. Anyways, I declined on that and I just said, send me a few masks. I'll do the review. They requested to see the review prior to my uploading. This is not the first time this request has been made by a company, but I of course declined because it's simply not worth my time, effort, or my channel's integrity to have my reviews pre-screened. Anyways, like I said, this review is gonna be mostly positive. Part of the reason why I've been apprehensive to do a glaring review of this product is because it's gotten some mixed reviews on Amazon.com. If you go on there, you'll find a wide variety of people who are complaining about the durability and the poor longevity of the product. Now, because those Amazon reviews were older, I asked the company if they made any changes to improve those weak points that people were talking about. And they said that they did, but they wouldn't specify exactly what. Now, I don't know if that's due to some sort of industry secret or if it's just that little was done. So I wasn't really sure what to make of that. Make of it what you will. Okay, so now that I've done my due diligence with regards to the disclaimer, let's just jump right into the review. Now, generally speaking, these masks obviously have a variety of uses outside the parameters of preparedness. But as preppers, especially practical preppers, I think this is something which is going to be especially useful to us. These things are going to be good for bug out bags, bug out vehicles, and they will probably make a great gift for somebody who was a prepper. There's three components to the mask. There's the mask itself, there's the filters, and then there's the valves. Now, there's two different types of masks. One is called the M1, and that one's made of neoprene. It's meant more so for cold weather and low intensity activities. That's because the material isn't as breathable as the next one I'm going to talk about. And there's also the M2, which is more breathable. This one is better in warm temperatures and it's moisture wicking. This one is better suited for high intensity activities because it's more breathable. Now, if you live in a warm or arid climate, then I would suggest that you go with the M2. If you're like myself and you live in a generally colder climate, then you're going to want to go with the M1. Now, there's three different types of filters. There's the F1, F2, and F3, which is kind of a combination of the F1 and F2. Now, the F1 is the filter with the highest efficiency. It's an active carbon filter with a filter efficiency of 99.9%, .9%, so down to 0.1 micron. This filters out everything from viruses to fumes to odors, chemicals, dust, allergens, bacteria. Because it filters out everything, this in conjunction with the M1 is gonna be the hardest combination to breathe through. There's also the F2 filter, which is a HEPA filter, which stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air Filter. Now these ones are 40% more breathable. They have a slightly less filter efficiency of 97%, so these are gonna filter out your dust and your allergens still down to 0.1 microns, but again, not as efficient as the F1. So because you have that increased breathing capacity, you're also going to be able to perform more high intensity activities. And it achieves this because the fibers in there are a bit more spread out because the HEPA filter absorbs the particulate matter kind of like a magnet. So it doesn't have to have those fibers as close together to get the same 0.1 micron level of filtration. Now the F3 is what they refer to as the premium filter. This is one which is a HEPA active carbon filter. It filters out 97% down to 0.1 microns. It's going to allow more air to pass through but not as much as the F2. So it's kind of a middle of the road one. It's good for higher intensity activities, although you're also gonna have that protection from fumes, odors, chemicals, stuff like that. So you're gonna have the breathability plus the odor control. They also have one more filter I should mention, which is a scentless filter. So when you breathe out, you're not gonna be giving away your scent to the animals. Now the life expectancy of the filters, the company claims that 20 hours with hard use. So if you're a person who's working in a very dusty environment for several hours a day, well one filter may only last you a few days. 
but if you're just using it for something like cold weather protection, which is an excellent use of it, by the way, one that I've tested and it works excellent for that, better than any other balaclava that I've used with the exception of one, which is called the Cold Avenger balaclava, but that's a pretty pricey unit in itself. Now you're going to get about 60 hours if you're just using it for cold weather, 30 to 40 hours on a filter for moderate use, and 40 to 50 hours for something like living in a smoggy city. Alright, so some of the pros of the RZ mask is that, of course, it looks very cool. There's a lot of customizable options. They have the mossy oak. It's basically the same as the HEPA active carbon filter, only there's no holes cut into the filter to match the valves so that the fumes of your own breath are filtered out by that active carbon. Now the looking cool thing may not be very gray man, but as far as N99 masks go, it's very hard to wear one inconspicuously anyways, unless you have a scarf over your face or something of that effect. So even though it stands out, chances are if people are wearing masks, if you're using this, it's not for the purpose of being gray man. But again, with the camouflage versions, in a wilderness setting, it could be beneficial for concealment purposes and would save you the task of painting your face. Now overall the fit is quite comfortable, but you have to find the right size. I believe that there are three sizes, there's regular, large and extra large. I believe that the large was the one that I found was best suited to my face and I had to use all three to determine that. So you may have to take a shot in the dark but very comfortable once you find the right fit. If the mask is a little too small, you will find that there's a bit of tugging and it feels a little bit awkward when you're turning your head uh, to 90 degrees. Otherwise, very comfortable. I like the fact that there's a lot of options. You can basically mix and match the M1 and M2 with the four different types of filters to meet your needs, so that's pretty cool. The stretching allows it to conform to the contours of your face, which makes for a nice snug fit and it just offers great respiratory protection. Now a pro worth reiterating is the fact that this is great in cold weather. And where I live, we've been in a cold streak here for the last week or so where temperature is down to minus 30. And I've been able to test this out and I can tell you that it functions a lot better than most balaclavas. Uh, because of the fact that you're not breathing in the moisture, the moisture is filtered through the filter itself. It's not gonna get all mucky inside the mask which is the case with a lot of balaclavas that can make for an uncomfortable generally gross feeling and you don't get that with this also the design is such that it leaves a bit of space between the filter and your face so this is going to allow you to talk freely and not have to worry about that condensation building up i should also add that the valves are unidirectional in the sense that you can breathe out through the valves but you can't actually inhale anything through the valves. This means that you are exhaling the moisture from your breath, but you're not bringing any moisture back into the mask. Now the cons for this is the relatively high price. Between 26 and 40 bucks seems like a lot for the mask and two filters. Now you can buy extra filters and the filters range from the F1, which is $7. That provides you with the most protection up to $13, which is the premium filters, which is the HEPA active carbon filter. So 13 bucks for a pack of three. Not that bad when compared to N99 prices. Uh, for a pack of three, seven bucks, that's decent, that's reasonable. And you pair that, of course, with the mask of the external shell, which, as I've been told and I've been reading on the Amazon comments, doesn't have quite the longevity that people would like. Regardless, I think a lot of those comments are being posted by people who use this on a daily basis. So I would treat it kind of like a pair of socks or a pair of gloves, a pair of work gloves. You can only expect to get so long out of it. For me, this is not something I'm gonna be using on a regular basis. If I was, I would probably do a bit more research in, with regards to other options that might be available. But I think for something that's just gonna be put in the glove box, so you can use it at will or keep it around the house for the odd task or put it in a bug out bag, I think it's ideal for that purpose. Now, if you go to the website, there's about 50 different applications they have for these masks. Basically, anything you can imagine using a mask for, these are going to be suited for. So I can think of a lot of things, especially in a shit hits the fan situation where there's literal shit everywhere and you got to clean it up. So odor control is going to be a big factor here. Obviously, uh, firefighters might benefit from this. 
It's going to have great utility for hunting, for masking your scent, even just things around the house like sweeping, sweeping up the garage, sweeping off a driveway, doing yard work, stuff like that. Maybe around construction sites if you're painting uh, for sanitation purposes, if you're doing a lot of woodwork out there in the bush, you know, all that sawdust and dust is being blown into the air. Uh, even for athletes, I've considered using this for some of my training to restrict the oxygen flow to increase my respiratory capabilities uh, for allergy control and numerous other factors. Now, if you're looking for an excellent pandemic mask, obviously this is going to perform the same way an N99 mask would perform. But if you want something which is going to give you the top of the line protection from some sort of pandemic influenza or something like that, you're going to want the Curad antiviral face masks. Those are the only ones that I know that are actually guaranteed to kill viruses that come into contact with the actual filter. I've done reviews on them before. I will leave a link on the video and in the description. There's one more con that I forgot to mention and that's that these things are made in China. Now that's not as bad of a thing as it would have been 10 years ago. Obviously the industry standards have improved. That might be a factor for you to consider in your purchase. And one last positive thing about the company is that they do promote the NRA. So they are a pro-gun company. So perhaps that can make up for the fact that they're made in China. Anyways, if you have any questions, feel free to fire them my way. If you want to get one of these masks, I'll post links in the description that you can go through. It helps support the channel. I think this would be a great little gift for anybody who does a lot of hard work outdoors and generally wears a mask. It looks a lot cooler. It offers more protection. It's more comfortable. It's just a little pricey and I cannot guarantee that it's going to last a long time. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out.